Hello, and welcome to today's lecture on elasticity. Elasticity is a concept in economics that uh, is very important, talks about the relationship between quantity supplied, quantity demand, and price. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's hop right in. So as I said, elasticity uh, is a measure in economic theory of how responsive one variable is to a change in another variable. In uh, our uh, class, we're going to be primarily concerned about, uh, concerned about uh, price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of demand is how responsive quantity demand it is to a change in price. And uh, price elasticity of supply is uh, the opposite, how responsive quantity supplied is to a change in price. Uh, the mathematics behind this are fairly straightforward. Um, basically, it's just a change in the quantity, uh, whether quantity demanded or quantity supplied, over a percent change in the price. Uh, if that ratio represented by epsilon here, epsilon uh, is just a Greek letter, just means elasticity. If that uh, ratio is greater than one, we call that uh, elastic. We'll say that the demand is relatively elastic or relative, or um, supply is relatively elastic. What this means is that the percent change in quantity is greater than a percent change in the price. People are very sensitive to a change in price. A small change in price leads to a large change in quantity demand or quantity supplied. If that ratio is less than one, then we say that the demand uh, or uh, supply is relatively inelastic. That quantity is not really responsive to a change in price. We have a relatively small change in quantity compared to a relatively large change in price. A large increase in price would lead to a little decline in quantity demanded. If the ratio is exactly one, we call it unit elastic. The percent change in quantity uh, is equal to the percent change in price. Uh, there are multiple ways of calculating elasticity. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to simply use the midpoint method. If you were to go on and study economics at a uh, higher level, uh, you would learn uh, the more precise method that we use uh, involving calculus. I don't want to do calculus in this class. You don't want to learn it, so we're going to simply do the midpoint method. It's good enough for our purposes. The midpoint method uh, is simply calculating the percent change in quantity by looking at the change in quantity uh, from the new change minus the old change uh, divided by the average times 100. And we do the same thing with, with press. We put these two ratios over one another, and we get uh, we get uh, a measurement of elasticity that's good enough for our purposes. So let's take a look at a mathematical example here. We want to look at uh, what's the elasticity between moving from point B to point A. So we're at this bottom portion of, of this demand curve. We know it's a demand curve because it's downward sloping. That's the law of demand. So first, we need to get the percent change in quantity. The new quantity is 3,000 units. The old quantity is 2,800. So we do 3,000 minus 2,800 divided by the average of the two times 100, which uh, when we do out that math, gives us a percent change in quantity of 6.9%. Quantity declined 6.9%. Um, we're going to do something similar for the change in price. Price went from 70 to $60. Uh, so we take the new price, 60, minus the old price, 70, over the average of the two times 100, and we get uh, a minus 15.4% decline in, uh, in quantity. Uh, Believe that, in price. So we take the uh, percent change uh, in ELAS in, um Quantity, which is positive. I misspoke earlier and I said it was negative. It's a positive number. Uh, over the negative um, percent change in price, price fell, quantity demanded increased, and we get a price elasticity of 0 0.45. 0 0.45. Now, you'll notice there should be a negative sign in front of this. Uh, 
there isn't. We uh, will tend to use things in absolute terms, um, but technically there should be a negative value here to show that the demand curve is downwards. Uh, so this epsilon, this ratio of uh, 0.45, tells us that the price elasticity of demand at this point in the on the demand uh, demand curve between point A, point B and A, is relatively inelastic. It's less than one. Uh, there's a relatively um, small change in quantity, 0.69%, compared to a relatively large change in price, uh, minus 15.4%. If we were to do the same calculation on different points in the um, demand curve, we would see different elasticities. Um, up here, between H and G, price, the price elasticity of demand is relatively elastic. And I will uh, save that as an exercise uh, for the listener, if you want to prove that for yourself. There are two extreme cases here. Um, we have uh, here on the left what is called perfectly elastic. Uh, perfectly elastic demand, perfectly elastic supply. What this means is the price does not change, but the quantity supplied or the quantity demanded uh, can be virtually infinite. You can, um, you can ramp up supply, you can ramp up your consumption, the price isn't going to change. Uh, here on the right, we have perfectly inelastic demand and perfectly inelastic supply. What this states is, regardless of the price, you're going to buy the same amount of quantity for demand or you're gonna produce the same amount for supply. It is possible in reality to have a perfectly elastic demand curve. However, it is impossible in reality to have a perfectly inelastic demand curve. The perfectly inelastic demand curve, if it were to exist, says regardless of the price, you're going to buy the same amount. But as we talked about last week, uh, at some point, scarcity kicks in. You're going to hit a budget constraint. You're going to hit a time constraint. You're going to hit some sort of constraint. Uh, and your quantity demanded at a sufficiently high price is going to fall to zero. Um, perfectly inelastic demand curves can exist over a small portion of the demand curve. It cannot exist over the whole of the demand curve. Uh, so it's a theoretical possibility. It doesn't exist in real life. There are implications from us from uh, elasticity. Why do we care about them? Well, elasticity can give us some good insight into how people will behave. For example, what percentage of attack will the consumers actually face? If the demand for the good is relatively elastic, then the firm will actually end up paying most of the tax. The firm ends up eating as much as possible that tax. Uh, the reason why? Because consumers are highly sensitive to a change in price. So uh, you put uh, a tax on the elastic portion of the demand curve, the business uh, would not um, uh, be able to get enough increased revenue from increasing the price to cover um, to be able to pass it along, so they have to absorb some of the tax. Their revenue is eaten into. If the taxes, or if the good is relatively inelastic at, that pro at the point of the tax, then the consumer ends up paying most of the tax. The firm can pass the tax on to the consumer. This is very, very important uh, when uh, discussions of policy come up. Um, it's very popular for governments to say, oh, this is going to be a tax on the producers. Uh, they're the ones who are going to pay the tax. But if the good is elastic, or um, then it turns out the consumer ends up paying most of the tax. Uh, excuse me, if the demand is inelastic, the demand is inelastic, then the consumer ends up paying most of the tax. Um, it also helps, elasticity also helps us answer the question, how would an increase in price lead to an increase in revenue? How much? Uh, it's the law of demand tells us that it is very unlikely that a 100% increase in price is going to lead to a 100% increase in revenue. But how much? Uh, if 
Again, people are very responsive to a change in price, so the demand is relatively elastic. Then an increase in revenue uh, will lead to, um, or excuse me, an increase in price will lead to a relatively smaller increase in um, revenue. If demand is relatively inelastic, then an increase in price will lead to a relatively large increase in revenue. Firms are very, very sensitive and they don't want to chase away all their consumers. So uh, there are measures that firms do of elasticity of demand. One final implication is that time matters. Over time, supply and demand curves become more elastic. This is as people search out more substitutes, as technology changes, as uh, available substitutes uh, come about. And this actually leads us to the second law of demand. The second law of demand states that the longer a price remains relatively high, the more elastic the demand curve becomes. We see that uh, very short, uh, very quickly, when the price is relatively high up here between H and G, the demand curve is already elastic, relatively elastic. But as the price remains even higher for even longer, people start out more uh, elastic, uh, more substitutes, um, uh, and uh, things like that. A good example is water. In places where water is very, very cheap, like here in the, uh, in the eastern United States, we have lots of lawns, we have lots of gardens. Um, whereas in Arizona, where uh, water is uh, fairly scarce, people have a lot more rock gardens. Uh, they have a lot more things that require less water. Here in the eastern United States, if we were to have a drought, uh, people would not immediately move to rock gardens, but if that drought were to persist over time, uh, then we might start to see more and more folks um, looking for substitutes, pulling out their gardens and going for rock gardens, uh, maybe washing clothes less often, uh, etc. This point about the second law of demand is going to become important when we talk about public choice and economics in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about how uh, people behave to certain uh, laws and certain um, um, situations. Um, but that's just a little bit of uh, tease for what's coming down the line. Uh, the next lecture in this series, uh, we're going to move in to consumer choice uh, and how people make choices with the demand curves and uh, uh, demand curves and uh, their various utility functions.